For 30 years, we've partnered with CARE to keep girls in school and to help women start their own businesses and gain financial independence. We're proud to support CARE's I'm Every Woman campaign and conversation series in celebration of International Women's Day. We know these discussions will inspire people to build a better, more equal world for everyone. Welcome, I'm Kimberly Williams Paisley and I am honored to be here with you today. CARE is building a world where every woman has equal rights and equal protections. This International Women's Day and throughout the month of March, CARE celebrates every woman, the leaders, the problem solvers, the protectors, the givers and the change makers. Every week this month, CARE is hosting exciting and insightful talks with women who've shown leadership and bravery throughout their lives. They remind us to celebrate the power of every woman and the collective strength that will lead us into a stronger, more equal future. You can join CARE in celebrating International Women's Day by tuning in for these talks and watching our remake of the anthem, hashtag I am every woman with Shaka Khan and Adina Menzel, and by sending a CARE package to support women around the world at care.org slash everywoman. I'm honored to lead today's episode, I Am a Fighter, with three incredible women, Dolores Huerta, Sandra Chikin and Ingrid Hoffman, who have all been leaders in their communities and set a wonderful example for how to fight with care to ensure everyone has the opportunity to live with dignity and to thrive. So Dolores Huerta is president and founder of the Dolores Huerta Foundation and co-founder of the United Farm Workers of America. She's also an American labor leader, presidential Medal of Freedom recipient, and civil rights activist who with Cesar Chavez co-founded the National Farm Workers Association, which later became the United Farm Workers. She spent her life organizing for change, challenging gender discrimination and advocating for nonviolence. Sandra Chiquin grew up in poverty in Guatemala with limited education and limited opportunity. Despite countless roadblocks, Sandra joined the local farmers co-op where they gave her much needed starting capital and supported her studies. CARE works closely with this group, trains the members and provided the seed capital for Sandra's packaging plant. And now Sandra is president of the cooperative with more than 500 female members and more than $6 million in produce exports to the US annually. Ingrid Hoffman is a professional eater, author and host of Top Chef Estrellas, Simply Delicioso and Delicioso. She is passionate about food policy, cooking and entertaining, and sharing her knowledge of food. So please welcome Dolores, Sandra, and Ingrid as we discuss economic independence and empowerment and the influence of food and food systems on communities. So welcome, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for being here. So this first uh, question, um, I would like to talk about uh, CARE's uh, food program, She Feeds the World, of which I'm an ambassador. Um, she Feeds the World empowers small scale farmers, particularly female farmers around the world. Um, I traveled to Guatemala with my son Huck a couple years ago and we actually got to meet Sandra and see the magnificent work that she's doing. Um, in Guatemala. So my question, maybe we'll start with Sandra. Why do you think it's important to invest in women in the agriculture and food space? And how can lifting up women in this way empower them to uplift their communities? It's very important to invest in women, empower them form Así de esa forma ellas pueden salir adelante en la agricultura, tener más conocimiento, tener la capacidad. De esa forma ellos pueden desarrollar habilidades y tener más conocimiento en la agricultura y tener, y tener también esa forma de cómo ellos puedan disminuir el nivel de pobreza, el nivel de, de nutrición y cambiar un mejor nivel de vida. 
Yes, Sandra, I, I loved hearing your story about how much your life changed um, from before you had this opportunity and just the idea of, of having to provide for your, your children and specifically having to sew your son's uniform because you couldn't afford to buy one for him. And then how much your life just changed afterwards and you know how much you really are able to give back not only to your family but to your community. Pues, en verdad, sí, vivir en la pobreza es muy difícil, es muy duro. Y eso es lo que yo siempre digo, que la pobreza nunca se olvida. Porque uno lo vivió. Ejemplo, mi ejemplo de vida, al momento de que yo tuve a mi primer bebé, el primer reto de una mujer, una mujer da, da luz a un hijo, es muy duro. Es muy duro. Yo, Dios me dio, una, me dio otra oportunidad de vida, porque al momento yo cuando di a luz no tenía, ni un, no tenía dinero, yo me iba, estaba agonizando, entonces me llevaron a un hospital que gracias a Dios logré vivir de nuevamente, y de eso empezó mi reto en la vida, fue mi hijo a la escuela, la primera vez que él fue a la escuela no tenía yo para darle un informe, para comprarle sus cosas que necesitaban, lo que pedían los maestros. Thank you. Y ahora veo la, veo la oportunidad porque es una, una fiesta patria que es 15 de septiembre en Guatemala. Yo no pude comprarle un traje a mi hijo que nos pidieron. Yo, yo lo que hice, tuve que recolectar cosas reciclados, papeles que no servían y yo los, los cosí, los pegué y mi hijo se fue a la escuela emocionado porque yo le hice su trajecito, lo fue a dejar y al momento de llegar y vi a los otros niños con sus trajecitos nuevos y él me mira y me dice, mamá, ¿por qué no me compraste un traje? Y yo con el dolor de mi corazón, sí, mi hijo, ahí está, pero no lo pude hacer. Y ahora sí, eso fue lo que a mí me motivó y dije, no, voy a cambiar mi nivel de vida y voy a dar lo mejor. Y en la cual me ha motivado llegar hasta acá y cambiarles uh, el nivel de vida a otras mujeres, enseñándoles mi ejemplo, que sí se puede salir adelante y se puede dar lo mejor a nuestros hijos. Y eso es lo que me motiva cada vez más y apoyar a más mujeres en estos momentos que estoy viendo la necesidad de muchas mujeres que están inscribiendo nuevamente a sus hijos. Entonces, de esa forma yo los estoy apoyando, pero primeramente Dios, que Dios nos acompañe siempre. I was so moved when I heard it. I'm so glad that you were, you were sharing it with everybody here. And I just admire your industriousness and motivation. And Dolores, I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about, as a labor leader and a civil rights activist, the importance of empowering women in this way. Well, I, I believe that Sandra just gave us uh, all of the reasons uh, yes. why we need to empower women, uh, not only because of the resilience and they're able to uh, innovate and, and, and meet the needs of, uh, not only of their children like she did for her son, but also meet the needs of the community. And we do know, as, as Sandra has just illustrated, that when women uh, are able to uh, get any type of resources, that what they do uh, with the, the financial opportunities that they have is that they share it with, the, with their families. Uh, you know, this, this is where they put the, any money that they are able to acquire uh, they give it up uh, to their families for food, for shelter, and for education. As she just uh, showed us about, you know, helping her son out uh, in school. And so this is why it's so important uh, that women and we, uh, women take the power. And I do want to uh, quote Coretta Scott King, uh, who said that we will never have peace in the world until women take power. And uh, and not only not only peace in the world, but the sharing of the resources uh, that we have on our planet. Uh, this is why women need to take that power. Uh, we also know that the majority of uh, of the farm workers uh, throughout the world, if we think of uh, other continents, of course, we're talking here about in terms of Guatemala, about Central America. Uh, 
uh, Mexico, we think of uh, Africa and uh, in Asia, that the majority of the farm workers are women. And even here in the United States, uh, I would say that about half of the farm workers are, are women. And people don't think of that, 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 that when they think of farm workers, they, they see a picture of a man with a hat on, but they don't think of a woman with a bandana on her, uh, uh, you know, that, that around her, her hair, or around her face. And, and that's one thing that we have to let people know that. And of course, um, these women are not always respected and not, uh, not only not recognized, but they're not, often not respected. And uh, this, of course, is something that we have to change. And and when you think of what Sandra is doing in forming the cooperatives, oh my God, this is this is a uh, this is such a wonderful example of one way that you can make sure that the work that they're doing comes back to them, mm -hmm. and that uh, uh, this is a way to uh, minimize or or deter or or stop the exploitation of the work that they do because they are coming together in these cooperatives uh, to make sure uh, that they are able to maximize uh, whatever compensation that they uh, they can get or that they deserve for the work that they do. Absolutely, and not only are they not respected in the same way as men, but they're not given the same resources as men in so many cases. So the women that you do see that are farming have worked even harder to get where they are. Um, well, in, yeah, go ahead, Dolores. Now, I was going to say, unfortunately, in the agricultural area, uh, often the men are not respected either, and mm -hmm. uh, they don't realize it. And that's one of the things that we have to constantly remind people, that the farm workers, uh, like even here in the United States, are putting the food on people's table every single day. And we are also dependent. And even here in the United States, uh, we, of course, uh, are also dependent on the farm workers in, in Guatemala. Mm -hmm. uh, I always like to say, and of course, this is a whole political uh, mm -hmm. policy issue, uh, but I always like to say when I give my lectures, and I, I like to use the word bananas. And when we think of bananas, uh, which we eat every single day, uh, does the money that we pay for the bananas, does it go to the people in Guatemala? No, it goes to our American uh, banana companies like Dole Banana or Chiquita Banana. It doesn't go to the people in Guatemala on whose land the bananas are produced and they are the ones that do the work to produce the bananas, but they do not get the money that we pay for the bananas. Wow. I was struck by that when I saw the, the products in Sandra's uh, packing plant that they, they were directly sold in Trader Joe's just down the street from where I live. So it, there really is a direct correlation from the work that's being done all over the world and what we're seeing here in the United States. Right. And Ingrid, I'd love your thoughts on this as well. Um, well, both have said so much. And, uh, you know, on my end, uh, I always like to think of food as it is from seat to table. So I mostly speak to the end consumer. And I've always made it a point uh, to be able to educate them little by little in a very entertaining way so that I'm, you know, so it can, the message can get through. And I have seen life change this way. You know, food can be the main healer, as we all know, but food can also be one of the leading causes for disease, especially in this country. And when you consider that 60, between 65 to 85% uh, of uh, diseases in America or in the world today are lifestyle uh, related. So obviously speaking to the end consumer uh, makes a huge impact uh, in, in the whole chain. Um, and by making that impact, the more you educate them, the more they can choose how to spend their dollar. And I always like to say you end up voting with your dollar when you start thinking of being able to support uh, whether it is brands or you know specific produce that is fair food that's the end game you know obviously we have bigger issues and that is accessibility to clean food to affordable food you know we have so many food deserts specifically here in america and it's really impossible task to manage uh and I think that, you know, one of my passions is food policy because all across we just need to rehaul our overall system. Um, you know, I try the most 
you know, I speak mostly to women, I would say, that, that, that are the ones that, ironically enough, although I work in a male-dominated industry, that more and more has had women join it. When you think about who's, who cooks at home, it's always women. And so um, sp specifically when we went, uh, I was part of the Michelle Obama campaign trying to do the uh, outreach to the Hispanic community in the U.S., and the impact that we have when you actually start selling people or sh besides selling them, showing them the process, how can you eat a little bit better? Because change has to start very small. Otherwise, it's not realistic. Um, but when people come back and they say, I actually am off of my diabetes medication, now you're empowering, empowering an entire household who starts living this method. So it all circles back, coming back to women. And for me, I always say that one of the things that women, as women, we need to do is to unite because there's a reason why the boys club uh, always functions. And that is the one aspect that I think culturally, probably we don't see the impact that we can have when we women unite, support each other, join each other, uh, specifically when you want to, and this is across from field to my industry, the amount of sexual, uh, you know, abuse that there is in the workforce in, we encounter it in, in every aspect of our lives. Uh, when women do unite to be able to empower each other in that sense, to be able to stand up, to be vocal, to, that we can protect each other. And I think that culturally wise, that's one thing that either we don't think that we, our voice matters enough. Uh, fear is always the, the driver. I'm going to lose my job. But, you know, hopefully there's been a waking up. I think that one of the things that we could see this past, uh, uh, you know, year and election is that women did rise and did unite and did make a change. And this change is going to have to take place from seat to table. And it's, I always say to people, you know, this is food is an, it's all of our problem because it is health. It's a health issue. It's an immigration issue. It's a human rights issue. It's an, you know, an end consumer. It touches so many aspects. It's a global warming issue. It's climate change. It's everything. And, so I think that empowering women, um, you know, we already have here discussed some of the examples is really the key to do and, and to be able to have everyone realize this. I think that that's one of our biggest challenges is to, you know, be able to drive this point through. Absolutely. You raised so many wonderful points there. Um, it's absolutely about women banding together. It's about education. It's about accessibility. And you're right. It affects so many things from, from immigration to national security. So people who think, oh, well, food's not my thing. You know, that's not my cause or whatever. It's all food is related to everything because it's such a basic human need. And, it, and it, you're right. It affects people here in this country and around the world. Um, that's wonderful. Uh, Sandra, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more in your story about how you, um, how you got the starting capital for your business. Cause I'm sure it wasn't easy getting to that point. So could you just talk a little bit more about some of the challenges that you faced when you were looking for investment and then the role of the co-op and care? Pues la, los desafíos que yo he, he logrado enfrentar al tener acceso a un crédito para ampliar, para seguir con mi cosecha, son muy, muy graves porque yo fui a un banco y le dije que necesitaba yo capital de semilla y me la negaron, me dijeron que no porque, porque yo soy mujer y mucho menos darle un, capi, un crédito de capital semilla a una mujer agricultora que no, es, no era posible, que, que yo no podía pagar ese crédito porque yo soy mujer, no, no tenía acceso a dinero, ni a terrenos, ni nada, pero yo insistí, ¿por qué? Porque ya me había empoderado con las capacitaciones que Karen nos daba, entonces 
yo me empoderé más, tuve más ese valor y demostrarles de que sí, yo sí puedo. Y déjenme demostrarles que sí voy a poder, juntamente con la cooperativa que me hicieron mi carta de que sí, soy una mujer agricultora activa. Y le dije al encargado del banco de que se lo iba a demostrar de que yo sí puedo, que las mujeres podemos hacer las cosas también y mejores que los hombres. Y entonces y me dijo, y así muy serio y enojado, me dijo, pues vamos a ver. Y gracias a Dios, con mi crédito, yo fui responsable y demostrarle de que solo las mujeres, las mujeres empoderadas, y la empoderar a las mujeres en la agricultura se hace de una forma más visual. Ellos tienen más conocimiento y se enfocan en lo que está haciendo, sabiendo que nuestro producto va a miles de mesas, alimentar al mundo de diferente lugar. Y eso es una satisfacción que uno está en el campo, habla con las verduras, emocional, y gracias a Dios sí, sí, las verduras también me apoyaron porque me escucharon y logré pagar mi crédito. Estaba a mitad de crédito, yo iba puntual, puntual, antes. Y cuando estaba en el campo un día y me llaman y me dicen... Fue una sorpresa para mí porque me impresionó y me dice, el encargado me dice, fíjense, hablo con, con Sandra Chiquín, sí, ah, no le gustaría ampliar su crédito porque usted es una de nuestras clientes del tipo A, entonces le estamos ofreciendo más crédito. Entonces fue un impacto para mí, dije, ah, entonces yo dije, pues, está bien, voy personal. Y fui y les dije que ya vio que sí, nosotras las mujeres sí podemos. Lo que pasa es que ustedes nos cortan las alas, nos dicen que no, pero si una mujer o que no, aún no tiene su autoestima elevada y dice no, es porque no puede. No, nosotros es la capacitación que Karen nos ha apoyado de que nuestra autoestima tenemos que estar empoderada. Y entonces insistí y entonces sí se puede. Y entonces lo, la demostración que yo lo hice dijo que sí es cierto, las mujeres sí pueden, pero no tenemos el conocimiento de las mujeres. Son que nos han discriminado como siempre, pero hay que demostrarles que sí se puede. Y así sigo haciendo mis créditos. Ahorita, gracias a Dios, he rompido ese red, ese, esa barrera que sí ya no, ya no me ha costado, me ha facilitado mucho, en la cual es un apoyo para mí. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. And once again, just underscores the important work of care for providing not only training to do what you've done so well, but also to Ingrid's point, to help women band together and to have strength and courage to keep going forward. And um, it's really wonderful. Um, Dolores, I want to come back to you for a second. You've been using your voice for decades to fight for equal rights for all. So I'm wondering if you can talk about what inspired your work in the first place and what keeps you inspired to do this. Well, initially, um, I was involved in a, a grassroots organization uh, way back when, starting way back in 1955, actually. Uh, but uh, I, the, when I saw how the farm workers were mistreated and not being paid, but they should be paid, and here in California, uh, they didn't have unemployment insurance, so uh, when they had to travel from uh, place to place to follow the crops, uh, they weren't uh, even given uh, any kind of assistance from the food banks at that time, uh, because the laws were that they had to live in one county for 12 years, uh, I mean for 12 months, before they could get any kind of assistance. And so that uh, kind of became, uh, and then having learned how to organize at the grassroots level, I decided that this is what, what I wanted to do. Uh, so I quit my job as a teacher uh, to become an organizer. And I have never regretted that decision uh, because that is so important. And well, you know, when we think of women, you know, here in the United States, uh, we are going to try to get the Equal Rights Amendment passed this year in, in the United States Senate. We're hoping that we can get education on that. And I don't know if, Gu in, if Guatemala, Uh, is one of the countries that has signed on to uh, the Equal Rights Amendment. I know there's only there's only a, a handful of countries that have not signed on, uh, but that is something that uh, CARE should uh, think about, about joining in that effort. Uh, we have a huge coalition of uh, women's organizations that are doing that uh, because, again, uh, the Equal Rights Amendment uh, is something that is at the United Nations level, uh, but it speaks to the fact that, that women need to be 
have equal rights as men. And I think that will help uh, women farm workers all over uh, the world uh, if, when we can uh, uh, get to that point. Uh, because I think this is something that, that we need as, as a statement and uh, and something that uh, all of us uh, need to work for. And I was so happy to hear, uh, to hear Ingrid talk about 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 food as, as you know food can be uh, food is nutrition we know but food uh, can be uh, nutrition or it can be poison and uh, we have a lot of illnesses especially in places like Guatemala and Mexico and even here in the, in the United States uh, where we have uh, people that are uh, eating the wrong kind of food you know, we have a lot of pesticides that, that are put on food. And so we have to keep fighting to make sure that the food that, that we eat is uh, organic and that we do not have a lot of uh, economic poisons uh, put on our food. I myself am a vegetarian. Uh, I don't eat meat. I gave up eating meat about, I think it's been about 30 years now. But I know many members of my family uh, who were diabetic. And we know that this is also a big issue in Guatemala uh, where and in Mexico and here in the, in the United States, where a lot of people have uh, have uh, have illnesses like diabetes uh, or obesity uh, and things that are related uh, to to food and the way that people eat. So I think uh, in terms of what Ingrid does, I think it's important not only that that we grow the power of women in terms of uh, growing food uh, by these cooperatives, but also that that we have to also. Uh, educate people on the right way to eat and also on the political front to make sure that we keep these poisons uh, like pesticides and fungicides and uh, you know keep them out of our food and I think this is something because I know in the United States of America we have the highest cancer rate in the world and a lot of that cancer that people suffer from is coming from the food that we eat and uh, so I think a food education is, is extremely important. And uh, I think that is some of the work that Ingrid is doing. And I'm sure that this is the work that Sandra uh, communicates with her leaders. By the way, in my foundation, uh, we, have, we do a lot of work with farm workers. Uh, the majority, uh, majority of our leadership that we have in our group are farm workers. And they all also do uh, a lot of community work in terms of getting uh, the type of infrastructure that they need, uh, street lights, uh, sidewalks, gutters, uh, neighborhood parks, and, and they advocate to make sure that they can get uh, the services that they need for their communities. Absolutely, great, great points. And um, so maybe the last question should be for Ingrid. Um, is there a specific call to action for the people watching today? What can we do to continue to support women that are fighting to be heard and respected in spaces that are traditionally male? Well, I think that the, the easiest way to say is that we need to start doing it in our own environment. Start having those conversations with our friends, with our coworkers, you know, feel out who's, you know, is something going on that you feel that you've never been able to express because you've been scared. It, we need to start having these uncomfortable conversations because it is fear and like Sandra's point, insecurity is one of our biggest, and I don't care who you are, we all deal with it in, in, in many levels of our lives. Um, and I think that when we are able to have those conversations with each other, we're able to then say, I'm gonna support you. And let's find out if there's other people in this specific situation or workplace or home or environment that have had a similar situation. Let's try and find out, let's band and join together. But we need to have start having these conversations and, and having them with every of the different women that we touch in our lives as to, you can do this, we can do this together and you know, we can drive change, but we need to do it together. It's very hard for one voice alone to stand up in the room and have an impact, but generally it will take that one person to actually start approaching the women in our lives and start having the conversation. So it does start with ourselves. And I think that I always say, you know, things start at home. So in our very closest environment is the easiest way. And then seeing how that reaction works, 
be able to take it into the workforce. But uh, definitely, we can do it. We've seen that, you know, here's Sandra's a wonderful example of it can be done. And all of us that have had to fight our way through this, uh, definitely. And I think that we are living in an era and, you know, after the Me Too, um, I think that women, everyone is ready. It's the, I, the time has come. It's, it's, we need to stand up for ourselves. Our voices do matter. I don't care if we're Latinas, if we're from wherever we are, our voice matters and we need to start standing up and hopefully we will. Absolutely. I completely agree. And we also need to teach our children. You know, I have two boys. And so for me, it was wonderful to be able to bring Huck to Guatemala and show him the power of women and have him come back and talk to our our legislatures and, go, you know, go to Washington, D.C. and advocate and write letters. And, you know, every little bit makes a difference. Support women, support programs that support women. Um, thank you all so much for this wonderful conversation, Dolores, Sandra, and Ingrid. Thank you so much for your continued fight for gender equality and justice. And I want to thank everyone for tuning in today and joining and celebrating every woman on this International Women's Day. And also, please send a care package at care.org slash everywoman. Thank you so much. Thank you.